Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beginner Breakdowns. Got some interesting stuff for you tonight. A lot of stuff from our very own coaches, though mostly for other games. Uh, so, going to be interesting seeing them try out Street Fighter V. Uh, actually, on that note, so one of y'all remind me, I need to get with somebody at the higher end of things, get them to fix that intro. We need to add some DBZF to that, seeing as that's the new hotness around here. Uh, but, of course, the point is that we want our intros to show that we support every major game out there. Uh, so let me talk to some people about that. Anyway, tonight we've got uh, up you first some matches from a first to ten. Sir Nookington, or Nook over there, played against a much higher ranked player, Byakuretsu. They're both, uh, I think Nook is on the east coast and Byaku is in... Germany, so there might be some lag, but it's interesting. Uh, unfortunately, my co-host Seth Series is busy tonight, so it's just me today. Uh, conveniently, there's no Laura's, so I don't feel bad about not knowing what's going on. Uh, obviously, all of these uh, matches are going to be from before any of the upcoming changes to the uh, balance, so... We'll, we'll, we'll talk about those if they come up. Let's, let's not get to them yet. So first up, again, this is Nook on the right. He is one of our Injustice coaches. Uh, I believe working on DBZF. So he is an experienced player, but just not necessarily Street Fighter V. Could have punished that much more harshly there. Let's talk about that for a second. So that's the thing that a lot of people struggle with, with punishing. So it blocks that whiffs the overhead the overhead fireball there now like that is a big whiff like you can see how long this. okay so salts are after the patch but we'll get we'll get to you I think these are before uh, which is why you switched to guile huh chicken and out I see how it is uh, but so big big whiff here like Sakura stays out in this recovery animation for forever after fireballs most fireballs have a big recovery animation if they whiff and in order to make people who have fireballs like suffer properly you got to be pun able to punish those if they manage to whiff a fireball usually you do this by jumping but you know some characters have fireballs that go up or you know in some way that you can avoid them through other methods uh Urian comes to mind he also can fire upwards and so if this happens you've really got to punish this so Nook just gets a light kick there that's 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 minimal punish minimal where she he easily could have if his reactions were on point and he'd been paying attention been able to get like a full heavy punish there because that's a big whiff so like and that's true of a lot of moves like admittedly a lot of moves in one of the complaints to 9.3 Fire 5 is a lot of the moves recover fast so it's hard to whiff punish them but there are a lot of very whiff punishable moves. So, you know, try to train yourself to punish the big ones at least. Like, that's a lot of damage people leave out, especially in the lower ranks where people just throw moves out like they're, you know, I don't know, bad candy. Okay, so now Nook is just crouching and letting Yakuratsu jump a lot. Like, let's, let's count to me. Let's count here. One, two, three. Four, five, connects, doesn't get a combo. Six, seven, connects, actually combos. So seven jumps there with no, like one eight air to air attempt, but no, and like one anti air attempt, but no actual re proper reactions there. You can't let people do that. <laughs> You've got, I mean, no, I'm not really like super criticizing Nook here. Like I said, he's kind of new to Street Fighter Five, but I'm pretty sure Injustice has anti airs too. Maybe not as, uh, not in the same vein, but you. You gotta, you gotta stop that stuff. You can't let someone jump seven times around you without intercepting them once, especially in a row. Now, I'm not gonna emphasize that because we've talked about that a lot in the past. Jumping is one of those things that everyone seems to screw up all the time, but gotta get that right. Okay, good. That was a decent air-to-air. -air. I mean, I think Sakura's anti-air options are decent. I don't know why he's constantly going for air-to-airs. Ooh, bad confirm there. So... You've got to watch that. See, that first, I think that's a crouching medium, gets blocked, and immediately he just cancels into 
the, the short you it might have been a misinput he might have been trying to cancel the fireball which would have been safer I don't know if it's safe uh, but instead gets the Shoryuken, which is definitely not safe so yeah deserved um, gotta watch that so a lot of people when you're first starting out the quarter circle and the Shoryuken motion can get a little jumbled, people tend to mess them up and get one instead of the other. Definitely practice that a lot because usually on a, on most characters, the way that the control schemes are laid out, the uh, Choryuken or the Z motion, as I th as you sometimes people call it, is going to be a very punishable move. That's just you know how people tend to lay out their, the characters because it's it's memorable. So you've got to be cautious and learn how to properly get the difference between the two. That's one of those basic execution things you got to practice a lot until you can pretty much never get it wrong. And, like, you'll still see the mistake occasionally, usually, like, in combos, but even from the best players, but definitely one to watch. All right, so... I, I don't... I hesitate to call that a solid read, but it worked. You know, read the fireball, got through with the Tatsu. Pretty risky. Probably could have just, you know... There we go, finally anti-air, but no combo. Could have done something off that crush counter. I think she can get her tech jump. Good anti-air again. I think Nook, Nook's waking up a little bit to these air shenanigans. That's punishable. If he quick risen there, I think that would have been punishable too. Gotta gotta take these punish opportunities. Like I think Sakura is not a very safe character in general, so being able to punish her will go a long way toward beating her, even as another Sakura. Okay, good. One thing I'll give Nook compliments here on, other than his anti-airs being a little off point sometimes, his defense is pretty solid. He's not letting himself get baited into frame traps or anything. He's just blocking. And that's a thing that, like, that's a thing you learn just by being good at a fighting game for the most part. Just, like, just, just blocking. It doesn't matter which one. Just playing any fighting game teaches you how to block if you're trying to get good. Alright, so the interesting thing about these is these are all later matches in the first 10, so they've been playing, this is match 8, and I think, I think Bakaretsu swap, swept him, you know, I, I mean, again, if you look at their ranks, it's not unsurprising. Uh, uh, but, you know... It's interesting to see it this late, start this late, because it means these guys have been playing for a while already, which means they should already have an idea what the other person tends to do. I mean, probably Bakaretsu more than Nook, uh, but, you know, I think that's why Bakaretsu is doing all these jumps and all these, like, close fireballs, because Nook isn't doing anything about them. Like, when Sakura does that close fireball, she seeds the, no, it's not, it's not Guile's fireball, she, that, it's your turn when you block that one, so, and Nook's just not doing it, so, Bakaretsu. Rocker just keeps doing it. There we go. Ah, oh, could have punished that much better, but at least got something. Okay, cross counter sweep. Okay, setup. Ah, oh, again cancels in that unsafe DP. I, I, I really can't tell if he's trying to get fireball and screwing up or just doing it on purpose because he doesn't realize he, he's confirming poorly. So, some tips for hit confirming. Uh, different people hit confirm different ways. Some people like to use the sound, you know, the, you have that kind of that dull block thud versus the kind of like pinging noise of a successful hit. Uh, some people like watching the stun bar on the opponent. Uh, if you're, if their stun bar goes up, it means you connected. So that's a good way to, that some people like to use to confirm if they're having trouble like grasping it fast enough because watching a, a meter go up is easier to immediately like visually grasp than like watching a hit. Um, some people just like watching for the hit, some people just go YOLO, but like hit confirming is an important thing to practice, um, whatever way works for you, but try to figure out a way that works where you can like either hear or see the hit, and th then and only then should you do the reflexive, you know, whatever, the DP, the, you know, the cannon drill, what whatever your character does after that confirm. You know the the sneaky throw cancel whatever. So you know pra that's a very important thing to practice, and a lot of people struggle with that early on, especially stuff like light confirms, or uh, you know doing confirms like in neutral. 
where, rather than using something like a frame trap when you're kind of anticipating the confirm. So just just try out some methods. You know, watch their meters. Try to learn to listen for the the hit sound. You know, whatever whatever your brain works best on. You know, give them all a shot in training mode. Just just see which one gets you the reaction. Set the box the bots randomly block. Practice that because that alone will get you quite a long ways. Because boy, a lot of people just don't know how to do it, and they'll do dumb stuff and get hurt. And then if you cannot do that dumb stuff, that's enough to beat a lot of people. All right, so done with that. These these random tatsus are working out for Nook, but they really shouldn't be. I think Gakuratsu is just. I think he's trying to do some random stuff because, like, that's a thing that happens, right? So, let's talk mindset here. This is quite late in a very very long match. Uh, you know. Nook is probably feeling a little beaten down, feeling, you know, a little bit stressed out. You know, he's he's been taking a beating for eight straight matches. Uh, so, it's at that point when a lot of people just start throwing stuff out there in hopes of catching someone off guard with something weird or surprising in, uh, in hopes to do uh, enough damage, you know, just get something out there. And I think some of these random things that Nook is doing are is kind of like that. Just, you know, oh, I'm just going to do this thing because, you know, what I was doing wasn't working. Crush counter, damn it. Two, okay, so that was actually another error that's kind of right, Let's talk about that. Okay, so... Good anti-air fireball there. Right here. So, at the completion of a lot of uh, DPS, especially, but in some special moves in general, you know, the enemy, the enemy character is in the air. Uh, so, obviously, on a lot of those moves, you want to hit them with a big, heavy hit or a crush counter. But you have to be cautious because if you do it too early, so right there, like that. See, see. Okay, this is actually the perfect pause point. You can see. Sakura, that's called her brown Sakura, is still not on the ground. So this hit that is about to happen in the next frame from Nook, air resets her instead of doing uh, a, a proper hit, a grounded hit that would let her combo. Air reset is a state that happens, for those of you who may not know what I'm talking about. When you hit someone in midair, when you hit someone in midair with most moves, rather than like being available for combo because this isn't Guilty Gear or KOF, they go into a reset state, which means that they become invincible until they touch the ground again. Uh, so, which causes the the setting to reset. You don't want to do this obviously when you're punishing people most of the time, because it means you don't get a lot of damage. They get hit once and then they recover and that's it. It's over. Uh, so you gotta learn to, how to punish things, especially things like DPs, grounded. So there's a certain amount of waiting you actually have to do for them to hit the floor, so that when they hit the floor, that's when you connect. So here, instead, Nook gets the air reset and goes for the combo, but Bra Brown Sakura is air resetting, so the combo whiffs and gets blocked. He gets the reset anyway, somehow. Uh, I, can't, I can't tell that that was a somehow plus or he just stole it with a sneaky down jab there. But, uh, could have gotten a full combo punish off there if he'd let uh, Byakuretsu hit the ground. I know it's not actually Byakuretsu, I just, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Extalt can kill me if he likes, I can see him in the chat, but I don't speak Japanese. Another good anti air fireball. Solid blocking, good counter hit there, but no confirm once again. Uh, you know, this is a good round for Nook. Nook looks looking like he could has a chance to take it. Doesn't punish that sweep, even though he had the freeze. So, like, that was an ideal whiff punish moment, because big sweep. Let's go back to that. So, big sweep he's activating so he can see right here uh, that 
brown Sakura is in the middle of the sweep animation. Like this, this time freeze lets you take a moment and just look and see what the opponent is doing. So in theory, Nook is aware that this is about to whiff. So he should be preparing to punish the whiff. He should be ready to stick something out. Like even in the worst case, he should be kneeling down to block and then punish it. But instead, he just lets it go. Okay, so brief pause. I see a question from chat, so let's go into that. Uh, so how do I deal with constant throws or tick throws? Um, well, okay, so if someone is just consistently throwing you, uh, you've kind of got two options. Like, they're just throwing you over and over. You can either, yeah, always try to tech it, which can be risky if they decide to mix it up. You could try jumping, which they can usually block or even anti-air, depending on the character, but may catch them at a bad time and get you a full combo. You can backdash, which can get you caught, but if they're consistently throwing, it's an easy way out and force them back to a space where you can throw some limbs out. Or, uh, what you really should do in the long term is learn how to late tech. So a late tech is a technique where you're blocking, or about to block, and when the, as the opponent walks up, you do a tech command late. So what that means is, like, you know, whatever the opponent's throwing at you, like you see a jab into throw, a tick throw, you let the jab happen and then you hit tech like in the la in the block frames at the end of the at the end of your recovery after the block jab or whatever so what this does is if they throw another attack uh, you just stay blocking but if they th try to throw you the late the, the late tech uh, the tech command goes through and it techs you out so it, blo it blocks both standard hits and throws which allows you to force your way out of a lot of nasty situations with tick throws or repeated throwing the counter to the late tech is the shimmy but uh most people aren't going to start pulling that out until you can demonstrate that you can late tech because the shimmy is a risk on their side they could get attacked while shimmying so you know you, they don't want to do that until you they, until you prove that you're actually worth shimming that you're actually going to get uh, caught trying to late tech. So if you're having trouble with throws, practice your late teching. Set the bot to, to do a tick throw setup and then late tech that, and then practice the bot to start alternating randomly between walk up attack and walk up throw and then try to tech out of all of those. It really is just practice and like, yeah, like, yeah, they, they the tech, tech timing is tricky, but it's really just a lot of practice so that you know what the tech timing is like and how to counter it. Uh, obviously, this goes all this just goes all completely out the window if you're fighting someone with a command throw, but uh, you, you got to start somewhere. Um, we're not seeing a lot of throws in this matchup, so I can't really describe it here. Maybe we'll see some more in the later ones, but both these guys are kind of adverse to throwing, probably because Nook isn't comfortable using them. They're a little different in, in Justice, so it's not as... Uh, common. And Ryakrich just doesn't need the Nook's letting his opening himself up to, to get hit, so he doesn't need to use them to break his guard. Alright, so that's two matches, so let's take a break with those. I have five total, but I don't want to just keep going all the way through them all the time. Uh, so let's take a look at Denzel, or Extal, who's in the chat, versus another one of our regulars, also in the chat, Salt Inferno. This is a Mika versus Guile matchup, which is, okay, so I'm going to say this honestly, I think this really favors Guile. Mika, you know, still really needs to get in to do damage, but, uh, and Guile just hates that, hates that a lot, makes, makes you suffer for it horribly. So even with all the changes to both of them, I really think it's still in Guile's favor. Um, I think it's better than it was before. I think the chair, uh, helps. Even if, you know, Exiles isn't using it, but I really think the chair is the better option here just because it lets you, like, pressure Guile from, for longer and let, give yourself more time to close. But that that's just me. You know, people can have different opinions. Exiles is a more experienced Miko player than I am. So let's see how this goes. So, Sonic the Boomhog or uh, Salt Inferno in the chat there can 
is usually a lower player. This is a secondary, so you know, kind of two diff very different characters. Let's see how this goes. All right, opening mic. Doesn't anti-air that. Could have flash kicked that man. Got you. Got to get those flash kicks on point. Solid guile pressure here. You know, just Exalt's just waiting because it, it is like I said. It's hard to get in. You got to be very patient. You got to take a lot of little pokes and take a fair bit of ooh cross up. Good getting out of the corner there. Could have uh, so Exalt isn't really anti-airing Sonic here, which is kind of a shame. Me because anti-airs are pretty good. And they lead to a lot of good setups. So really, x come on, man. You gotta anti-air this guile. I know you're worried about fireballs and shit, but you gotta anti-air this guile. Ooh, throw loop. Okay, so... Speaking of throw loops, let's look at that. So... In the... In the, uh... In the corner, at least. I think almost anywhere, actually. To a degree. Uh, Mika's, uh... Pile driver. That one. Is loopable, so... So Exalt is using a setup there, it's called. So he gets the first one, takes him into the corner, whiffs that jab because that fixes the timing. Uh, and so that means this next throw will connect uh, exactly on when Guile... Basically, it's a, it's a meaty setup. So Guile gets caught again. But now Salt, Salt's wise. He's like, uh-oh, you know... Surely he's gonna do it again because that's just how that's how Mika's and Grapplers in general roll. If they if they got if they're get, if they're getting somewhere or something, they often don't want to change. So this time, uh, he delays his wake up with a back roll, which I can't tell if that. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at that because that was kind of weird. I'm actually not sure what happened there. So I think Exalt's. I think. Uh, Salt backrolled. No, you can't backroll those. Those are hard knockdowns. So I think uh, X Salt just got his timing off. He he got his setup wrong and whiffed it. And so Salt, yeah, that I was about to say you can't backroll that. Um, so Salt gets lucky. He was probably, but Salt also kind of had the right idea here. The the right reaction if you're getting thrown a bunch of times is is to jump. Like especially in the corner because it'll let you punish the throw on the way down. It was probably too quick. Um, it looked like it was too quick. Uh, so Salt jumps, and presumably, yeah, gets this. Oh, messes up his punish. Come on, man. That's an easy one. I'm, I'm, I'm just joshing you. But so that could, that would have been a full punish and a force out of the corner. But this is a big problem now because he got he got a little damage there, but he's still with his back to the wall, uh, with Mika in front of him. That's like. That's like the least. That's not a, like a. That's a bad, bad place to be. Like grapplers with your back to the wall. That's like, uh oh, you, you, you got to start thinking real hard. Like you, you got to start getting that galaxy brain going, coming of the way out of there. So let's see if he manages it. Jumps out, but this time Denzel has the headbutt waiting, and oh, the reset into the EX for the kill. So that was that head. That was that good Mika anti air I was talking about earlier. Just waiting for Sonic to try to jump out of there. Can't can't rely on that against grapplers. Sometimes it's just best to throw some fireballs, put some jabs out, and just force your way out the regular way. One thing I will say that's really good about uh, Sonic's uh, well, Salt's uh, Guile here is that he's not afraid to move forward and be aggressive. A lot of Guiles turtle up too hard. Um, Guile can be a very effective aggressive character, and really you need to use that aspect of his game to establish, you know, some dominance. Okay, so there's, there's a reversal of the situation, so... Goods, this is a good way out of, a, of the corner if you catch them slipping. If you can back throw them, you, you know, you obviously you completely reverse it to the situation. Now they're in the corner, and you're in control. But, Extalts, just like Denzel, misses his meaty. Gets counter hit slapped with a wake up jab, and Denzel forces his, his way out with a, uh, a jump out. So definitely could anti air that salt. Like both of y'all, either you got their backs to the corner, you got to get those anti airs on point. You want to start like standing and spacing. You especially with Guile. Guile wants to be a little bit further back because you can use those long low kicks and then flash kick when they if they try to jump that sort of stuff to really put some 
pressure on somebody. You know, so you, you do those like crouching mediums, then you throw a fireball, or you just stay crouching. You let them try to jump out or advance, and then they get flash kicked or fireball in the face. Like you, you've got a lot of options just to hold them there. You can't. You, you don't want to like let them just jump at you like that. It's it's bad for you. So jumps out, and this is probably going to stun because he didn't stay out of the corner long enough to, yeah, so that's it, that's death. Didn't even uh, have to finish the combo. So, what could have happened differently there? So, let's go back to the start of that sequence. So, first, first mistake, let's really go all the way back to the very first mistake that gets him into the corner here. So, they're brawling in mid-screen, this is fine for both of them. Eats a light combo, gets caught so, gotta be careful there. Gets hit when you're... I, I, I suspect he was backdashing or jumping or something to try to avoid getting thrown and instead got caught uh, by the, the the regular jab there. Or actually, I think that's a medium punch. I mean, that's that's a bad read. It, it happens. There's, could have gone either way. I personally probably would have stood and blocked that first time. Because most grapplers prefer to use strikes closer to mid-screen, uh, especially Mika. But I, you know, maybe I would have lost, and he would have done the pile driver. It's hard to say. So not so far. It's just been a couple of bad guesses and a mistake on the. Yeah, you got caught back dashing. That makes sense. You were trying to avoid uh, a th wake up throw mix up or some other nonsense like that. So now he's. So this is a very bad position for, for Salt here. He's got very high stun, his back's to the wall. So here he makes a very smart decision. He gets up late and therefore catches Den Denzel messing up his meaties again uh, and back throws Mika into the corner. So now advantage is definitely Salt and his, you know, his stun is starting to go down. It's all gravy but he messes up his meaty. So that, you cannot do that when you're in the corner. Like more so than anywhere else, when you're, when you, one of you is with your back to the wall, your meaties have got to be on point because the situation is super risky for both of you. Uh, like either of you can end up with your back to the wall at any time, you know, it's 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 bad you're both under a lot of stress you cannot uh afford to screw up like that so make sure your medias are on point so that's mistake one mistake two okay so denzel gets the wake up jab but that doesn't really lead to anything good so he's just using the this this block here this blocked attack here to force uh sonic back so now sonic is here he does a, st a jab. The jab doesn't even get blocked. He's too far away. Uh, that's kind of mistake too. Like when someone's in the corner, you really don't want to be whiffing a ton of stuff in front of them because when someone's got their back in the corner, suddenly all their attention is on how do I get out of here. So, like I find that people to their backs to the walls are the people are people who tend to either go one of two ways. They they either like start like get like madman good all of a sudden and like whiff punish or like look for little openings and like just fight their way back out because they're hyper focused now like you know, since they don't have to focus so much on movement they can just hyper focus on fighting their way out or they panic and you can take them apart uh, in this case Denzel does not panic so Salt's whiff there gives Denzel the opportunity to do this jump cross up and Salt doesn't recover from the whiff in time both like in terms of like animation and in terms of like mental like oh where is she to stop the this counter hit that happens here with a jumping knee which allows Denzel to do a, a very light combo and then reset into this throw which stuns and ends the game so again corners are dangerous for everybody like once someone's in the corner like everyone's got to be laser focused you make a mistake and it's just like, oh, someone just took a ton of damage and ended up in a bad spot. Like, either way, whoever makes the mistake eats it hard. So, when you're in the corner, you've got to focus in, play smart, and look and like wait, look for a good opening. When you're, 
attacking someone in the corner, you have to be aware that they're like laser focused on getting out of the corner. That means you gotta, you can't whiff a lot. You gotta use your space. And you gotta be, you gotta have your anti airs decked up and on point. You gotta be like ready to kind of shut them down because if you don't shut them down this kind of stuff can happen to you too <laughs> it could happen to you be on your guard all right so let's do some swap back and forth let's go back to a, another one of these sapper matches this is match 10 so either nook took some or they uh just decided to keep going so it gets caught jumping again he keeps trying those air to airs. I really don't know why. Sapper's anti airs are not that bad. Oh, jump. Gets I don't know why he bothered EXing that. Like, that was just a straight. Could have just crush countered that sucker. I guess. Well, I guess Sapper's crush counter is kind of bad. She's only. She's an okay character. I think her crush counter is kind of weak, as I recall, so I think that's why maybe they're not using them. Yeah, that was the joke, so thank you. I appreciate someone getting it. Maybe I'm old. Maybe I'm a little too old for this audience in terms of jokes. So, what what we're seeing a lot of here is like little inexperienced things costing Nook a lot. So, like he gets this, gets the solid combo, very good, but just stays back. You know, maybe there's not, you get, no, you get air to air, air, but like, that damage difference is the damage that Nook didn't get off that combo he dropped. If he hadn't dropped that combo, I think Byakuretsu would have died. So, that's when I, when we talk about damage optimization and like experience and practice, that's what, why it's important. You know, you get... The difference of like getting one combo completed or getting one whiff punish is the difference very often between winning and losing. So, you know, you, you got to get those little things. Those little things add up. You know, they feel very small. Like, you get a whiff punish on some things or a, a block punish, and you get like a jab or a single like medium kick, and that's like, you know, this much HP. So, it's like, oh, that doesn't feel like a lot. Uh, but all those little things, you know, right here at the end, if, if all those little things had happened and at like that point or like, let's go back. Cause you know, like right here, if all those little things had happened for, for Nook, he would have, he would have won the match because you know, all these little things he missed. It's like, let's look at this. Like could have anti aired that. That's, that's a little bit of damage there. Could have anti aired that. Avoided that damage and done a little damage to his own. You know, could have anti aired that. Could have punished this better. Drops the combo. It's punished for it too. So all these little mistakes, you know, all these little little touches that add up. All these, you know, hits that he doesn't get. I was getting anti though. That anti he misses again there. Every little bit of that adds up. So like when we're when I talk about like emphasizing like all these little little things that don't feel like they're these big things that make you win, it's because in the long run they are what makes you win. It's it's not these the big combos that like the big combos change the flow of the match, but it's all these little touches, all these little elements of better play that win in the long run. Alright, so that's enough philosophy, let's get back to it. Uh, because again, like, like Nook lands something big here. Like this, if he had landed all those little touches before, like that would have won probably won him the match. You know, that would have been it. But because he didn't get those earlier uh, hits, he loses by a very small amount of health. Walked right into that. I don't know why. I, I, see, just constant air to airs, and those aren't. So, let's talk about air to airs. So, a lot of people like, especially in lower ranks, like doing air to airs because they're they feel easier than air than ground airs, right? Because you're not timing. The timing is not as uh, hard. You can just jump up and hit like a light attack and intercept them because they're usually trying to do something that will hit lower and harder so that you can catch them in midair. But 
Why are they bad? Well, here's this right there was actually a prime example. Like, there are characters with good air airs, like people with air target combos with knockdowns and stuff like that. So, let's look at this, this air to air set here. So, Nook intercepts Yakuretsu with a light attack, but if you look at where they are in the air, because of the air reset and the way that timing works, Byaku Yar Byaku Yarsu, I'll get this right, damn it. Uh, actually hits the ground first, and therefore, instead of uh, getting any sort of advantage, uh, Nook actually eats a counter hit, trying to continue the, his his offense, because it feels like he was you know advantageous. He'd gotten air to air, right? That means it's his turn, but it's not. Because when you reset someone in the air with an air-to-air, -air, uh, often they hit the ground before you do. Which means that they get to act first. So unless you have an air-to-air -air that does a knockdown and are, are and are know how to air-to-air -air confidently in a way that will like leave you at advantage when you hit the ground, it you have to be aware that like it'll stop their their jump in, but it won't actually stop their offense because once you land it's it's still their turn so you get a little bit of damage which isn't nothing but the difference is if you get someone with a with most good air to, uh anti airs when they land now it's your turn you know they 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 land and you've already recovered so you can just uh you know start your offense so that's why you know for the most part you know some characters have specific ones that are better uh, you shouldn't rely on air to airs, or you should at least be aware of their flaws when you use them, uh, so that you don't run into these situations where you get counter hit and then hit with, with uh, a bunch of pressure. Good attempt at the air to air there, but I, that's not really the right one. I, just, I think Cypher has a better one for crossing air to air. So, like, that's the thing to keep in mind. Some air to airs work better for people trying to cross you up than others. Uh, let's actually talk about defense against cross-ups there, because that happens like three times in a row. So, cross-up. Cross-up attempt that leads into a whiff punish. So, cross-ups, right? I, I'm sure a lot of you have struggled against cross-ups. Cross-ups are a pain. Like, they're, they're very, very annoying. So how do you deal with cross-ups? Well, okay, so this is going to sound stupid, but the simplest way to deal with cross-ups is not be in a position for the cross-up to happen. So, you can only, most characters, you know, minus someone like Bison, uh, can only cross someone up from a very limited jump position, because you have to be able to jump completely over their heads. So that's really from like, like right next to them back to about, at most, one character space, call it. You know, one one person with uh, that's the furthest way you can generally be and be have a reasonable expectation of getting a cross up even with the best cross up buttons like there are buttons that are better than others but like you cannot be very far away so why is this important well when someone is in that range there that means you're generally both in limb range so one of you should already be attacking on the ground so if they're attacking on the ground, then you should be wary of them trying to jump to a cross up and be ready with a light, a quick anti air, you know, to switch the pressure up. If you're attacking, uh, obviously they shouldn't be able to jump out at all, assuming you know what your pressure is like and you know how to back out. When neither of you is prepared to attack, that's when you're supposed to be using back dashes and movement to get yourself back to a position where someone can't uh, just cross you up. So, like, if you're getting jumped on and crossed up a lot, you, you gotta you gotta think, oh, that means I'm just standing, and that that's the key word, just standing too close. When you're that close up, you should be thinking about doing something. And whatever that thing you're doing should be the threat that keeps them from doing the cross up jump. Whether that's they're afraid you're gonna, you know, jab them out of the jump or you know, whatever. You know, you shouldn't just stand that close and let someone jump over you. 
you when someone's up close in your face like something should start happening like you'll see pros like occasionally like crouch in each other's faces and just like stare down for a moment but that's because they're very good and they know their opponents well and they're trying to predict something specific and they're, they're both like waiting for the other person to make a move for the most part in the in the skill levels we're talking about here and like especially online where you don't know who it is you're fighting like 90 percent of the time you have to be ready and willing to you know pressure them or do something when they're right in your face uh to avoid crosses better get out of range yes in a lot of situations if you're plus or it's neutral you, you know the better thing to do is to start trying to poke or aggress if you're minus or you're not you're uncertain you don't want to you know stick your hand into the blender yet the best thing to do is to back up and force them into a range where a jump in would have to come from the front so you can anti-air it and force them and you know reset your positioning assuming your back is into the wall one of the reasons it's dangerous with your back to the wall is all of a sudden you can't get out of range of things so you have to you have to hold it but absolutely if you're just like in the middle of the field and you're worried about a cross-up and you're not prepared to apply your own pressure the best thing to do is to just back up and unrange yourself from cross-up and that also makes it a lot easier anti-air obviously because you can see the whole jump bar can react so definitely the, tr the trick is to to know the range where someone can cross you up and do your best not to be just sitting in it uh, all the time So, corner pressure, ooh, good back throw. Again, same principle, but Backroads uses a cheeky XDP to get out. I don't know why he used the up and fireball there. That was maybe a mistake, or I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he thought Backroads was going to do another cross up jump. Anyway, that, that's cross ups for you. Alright, so next up we have. Uh, Salt again, but this time there's Fravasar, a very good uh, player and one of our uh, coaches as well. Round one has their own channel, you know, Fight. high rank diamond player, very, very dangerous opponent. So, disrespecting a little bit there that spin knuckle. That spin knuckle is reactable, but it doesn't have any fireballs, so the record's uh, salt like it. We start doing that even again, just, just, you know, just jab that, that stupid uh, spin knuckle. It's, it's, it's that slow. You gotta learn to react to it. Fravasaur is playing in a massive game. You know, poking and not trying to do that not to run at all. Not to do With something there and something like that. Just playing there. So let's go back to that. That was really good. I want to I wanna highlight that. So, right here, Fravasaur misjudges his distance. Just a little. Oh, so right here, uh, Frab misjudges his distance just a little bit uh, and whiffs. So now he's plus. So Frab's trying to realize he's out of position. Starts trying to walk forward. It's clipped by the up down. And so again, whiffs, but this time. So Sonic, that we talked about that freeze earlier. I don't know if Sonic was like trying to do it, but that freeze. Like right here, you can see, oh, Kami is going to an attack animation. So if I EXDP here, whether whether he whiffs or he, he, he technically hits me, I will plow right through that sucker. Oh, sorry, a DP there, and just nail him. And it does. Again, there's that spin knuckle. You, you gotta react to that, man. You gotta shut that down. That spin knuckle is slow as crap. All Guile's just random flash kick. It's just part of the game, man. Okay, so you got good EX flash kick to break some pressure there. Frab, unfortunately, drops that combo. That costs him the game. Every, even the, like I said, even the best people do it. So, let's see how Frab adapts here. You, you haven't blocked in Spin Knuckle, so I'm not surprised he keeps using it. But doing a good job of shutting down his approach. Like you're using that crashing medium kick well. You're you're using your punches to keep for, keep space up. But now, okay, so there we go. Yeah, again, very very good use of your attacks to keep space. Bad punish. 
Oof, that was bad. But Frab also drops. I guess there's some lag or something, I'm guessing. Because either that or Frab's like way out of practice on Cami. Shouldn't be dropping that kind of stuff. I think, you know, Frab originally was a Nash player. I don't know if he's still playing Nash or if he's swapped because of all the Nash. So, a lot of unusually poor play by Frab there. Uh, a lot of whiffs and uh, dropped combos that got him punished a whole bunch. And a lot of walking into attacks. Um, I, I kind of want to see... Okay, let's, let's keep going here. I want to see how he changes up this next match. Because that is that is out of character for him. As someone who knows how he plays. He's usually very, very strong on spacing. Because you know, he played Nash for so long. Nash was all about that. So it's, it's a little unusual to see him walking into so many attacks. Like... You're expected to walk into some attacks against Guile, because it's Guile, but you, not that many. Okay, yeah, for a two-day-old Cami, this is still kind of, like... So, two-day-old Cami explains the dropped combos, but doesn't explain all this weird spacing problem he's having. Like, he should be better at that, because that's something that kind of applies character to character. Like, it's not the same, because characters have different spacing, you know, for each of them. But the, the general principles are pretty similar. So I'm surprised he's making as many spacing mistakes as he is. But, you know, Cammy does take a little adapting because she's kind of... She can be a little bit stubby feeling and her walk speed is very fast. Which means that if you're used to a slower walk speed, you can kind of walk into things that you thought you were out of range for. Because you're just not aware of... Okay, he read you like a book there. Yeah, like that was that 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 last ex flash kick was one ex flash kick too many. Like you you done it so many times at that point, it's like yep, this is it's coming. You got to be a little less trigger happy on that. Yeah, I think Frab Frab's waking up here. He's he's starting to, to, to you know use that that dive kick really effectively. And he's really starting to read your flash kicks, man. You gotta be way more cautious with those. Like people walk into them constantly early on. Uh oof, good a punish attempt there, but uh little little late. The, luckily the, the V trigger made that not I'm not gonna say safe, but hard to punish. So now good aggression here. Uh chance to close this out. Frab is usually pretty slow to pull the trigger in EX DPs, so it's 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 relatively safe to keep pressure him. Ooh, baited again, and that's going to be... Oh, drops the combo. Ooh, chip. Good jump out. Wow. Excellent. Uh, excellent, excellent jump out there. Uh, I don't know if you meant to do that, but either way, that was... That that would have chipped you out otherwise, so... Luck or skill, that was... That was some good shit. Alright, let's see if Frab... You know, figure some stuff out here. Again, you get hit by that spin knuckle, man. You can't, you can't let that happen to you. Spin knuckle, you, you gotta. If Cammy's like standing like way out there, like you gotta be ready for her like distance closers. All of them are interceptable, so you, you gotta do that, or she'll just keep doing them in closing distance, and you really don't want to let her do that. Okay, so solidly in the corner. Not as bad for you, Guile, as some good EX flash kick there. Like, sometimes you just gotta do it. I'm not gonna say never do it. I think you're doing it a little too much, and you've been punished a couple times for that. Oh, yeah, you gotta be really careful about using fireballs against Cannon with Meter, because uh, her EX uh, Cannon dr Drill, or Spiral Arrow, goes right under them, especially Guile's. So... You know, just be cautious about using too many fireballs at range against candy, especially the slow ones. It is hard to see the startup on Spin Knuckle. Like, I'm not going to say it's easy to intercept, but you have to be able to intercept it on a lot of characters to uh, shut down her approach. Guile is a prime example because it will go through fireballs. So a lot of candies will try to use it to, to catch you Sonic Booming. So you got to be able to be like, oh, she's using a lot of Spin Knuckle. I'm going to stop Sonic Booming fake a sonic boom with a whiff or something and then try to intercept her coming in. So, you know, like, I'm not saying it's going to be... A lot of the stuff I say, I'm not saying it's easy or, like, quick to learn. I'm just letting you know it's important to learn. Like, it's something you should work on. It's, you know, the difference... It's not necessarily going to be something you're going to pick up in 
one one day or anything, but it's it's something you need to learn for the matchup for or for general usage. Yeah, definitely like salt. You're super. Uh, you're super happy on the those ex flash kicks. Like Frab is like honestly being a little too uncautious about them, but like you you really gotta tone that down. Like it is a habit that will start getting you killed is once people start like cottoning on. And, you know, it uses up your meter, which you might want to save for more dangerous stuff later. Man, again. For, Frab is really going ham here, and that's a, that's a little unusual for him. I, I think it's a, that new character thing again. Oof, get, you got caught back, dashing buddy. Bucko. Yeah, like, I think Frab's usually... Like, I'm used to Frab playing a much more defensive play style. Uh, so, maybe he's a little bit... You know, having a little... T feeling himself a little hard on this aggressiveness, but... That, that was an interesting set. Um, definitely, like, the big takeaways for you, Salt, is uh, you've got to be, for, against Kami's, you've got to be, like, on point with your reactions. You got, they, they have, she has a lot of options for passing through fireballs and other things like that, so you can't rely so much on keep out. Uh, you've got, you know, dive kicks and all sorts of timing changes and fuckery. So you've got to, you've got to learn how to intercept a lot of her, like, tricks in order to keep her out, and you really do want to keep her out because uh, she's very, very, very dangerous when she closes. And you, Guile, once they're like on top of you as Guile, you've got to be, you know, you got to be willing to pull the trigger on a bunch of uh, nasty stuff. Like you got to be willing to pull the trigger on yes, flash kicks or like random, random like jabs. You can't. There's, there's, you gotta be a little bit riskier. So, you know, you really don't want her closing. So, so work on intercepting, uh, like spin knuckles and dive kicks and all the other little nasty things. Hooligans. You did a good job of catching the hooligans, but it's kind of her worst one. Uh, you know, all the little tricks she uses to try to get in. Be more cautious about throwing f slow fireballs at range because she'll go under them with the EX, uh, spiral arrow. And, uh, be a little bit less happy with the EX flash kicks. Like, I know a bunch of them worked this time, but like, especially if you gave Frab another couple of, of matches, I think you would start getting punished for them like pretty, pretty consistently. Yeah. Usually, yeah, when you, when you first get like an EXDP, it's like, holy crap, I can just do this and it makes them get off of me every time? I'm just gonna keep doing this. And then you run into someone who just blocks it and punishes you. Like, oh, oh. I uh, I've made a huge mistake, and then 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 you kind of yeah you, you start toning it down at that point. All right, because you're both in the chat, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one versus Bovinity rather than going back to any more Sakura. Um, Akuma versus Guile. I think this is a pretty even matchup, to be honest. Like, obviously, Akuma loses the firewall. Doesn't well. Okay, so Akuma doesn't actually lose the firewall war a lot of, some of the times because he can do those red fireballs um, if you give him any space to do them, which allows him to like at least contest the fireball war. And up close, like Akuma is just still even with you know all the changes is still super super dangerous. Like the only risk, for, the risk for Akuma is kind of like is one that's also risky for Kami. His health is very low, so. You can't afford to take a ton of damage against, uh, you know, trying to get in. So you, you got to be, got to be cautious. So as we can, as I say that, you know, this is that's what's happening with Bovinity here. Bovinity is just getting forced, kept out, and taking a ton of damage. So like, it's hard to make up that much of a life deficit. Like Akuma can do it. Akuma does a ton of damage, and and you know hurts it it hurts but uh you can't afford to take a lot of these trying to get in damages as akuma okay so this is where akuma wants to be good neutral jump on the throw just a little too late uh would have should have done it a bit earlier if you're anticipating a wake-up tech uh that might have gotten you a chance to, to get the air hit it's harder to neutral jump regular throws good anti-air could have comboed out for that so for a little bit of something Okay, now you're in the corner. I mean, Guile isn't as dangerous as people in the corner as some characters. It's just really annoying. 
so a lot of booms, you know, one, one thing you gotta be willing to do as Akuma sometimes is, you know, against Guile, if they're just like, if they just got you up close and just like pressuring you, you've gotta be willing to EXDP yourself. Good uh, trigger activation there. I think my DP was a little late, which is why I didn't get to follow up. Ooh, nasty. Alright, so let's go on the next match here. So Vivinity, what, what what you gotta do is like this is a very patient matchup. You use red fireballs if uh, Guile's using a lot of the slow booms, and just kind of like try to clear space and force Guile back into the corner. Um, you know, because that as you try to do that, Guile's gonna do one of two things: either he's gonna start trying to fight back, which means he's gonna start aggressing on you, which puts him in front of you where you want him to be, or he's gonna let himself get back to the corner, which will let you force him to be in front of you where you want him to be. So. Uh, you know, you, you just gotta take your time and try not to take too much of these little chippy hits while forcing them back. Also, don't drop that combo. You can't afford to drop combos as Akuma. You don't got the health to eat the punish, and you need that big boy damage to make up for the your health loss. Especially against Guile. Ooh, that was nasty. That got real weird there. That was another one of those air reset situations. Solid use of the V-Trigger gets a bunch of damage there. Ooh, that's going to be stun, and that's going to be it. Ow. That's that low, low Kamimo HP coming to haunt you. So, less jumping, Vivendi. Less jumping. I know, it's it's tempting. But, especially if V-Trigger 2 guy, you cannot, you do not want to be caught by those flash kicks. You do not want to get anti-aired against Guile. It, you can't afford it as Akuma. You know, like, yeah, like right here, like, all this little damage you're taking, you can't afford that. Oh, so, yeah, here's where the, yeah, I, okay, okay, so let's talk here. I'm not going to make fun of you, but I, I know how it is. I played freaking Zangief, okay? Imagine trying to play that against Guile. I know how frustrating this feeling is. Like, the feeling of, like, oh, I blocked, like, three booms and tried to jump in and I got flash kicked. It didn't, I didn't get anything. Nothing happened. And he got all this free damage, and I hate it. Like, yeah, it sucks. It It's, like, mentally taxing. You feel like absolute buttocks. It's terrible. But you've got to just keep playing calm and don't let it get to you. You've just got to keep moving forward. Sometimes, if you're at a far distance, use a big old red fireball and kind of walk forward behind it. Either Guy's going to have to do his V skill boom to go through it, or he's going to jump himself, or his boom will get eaten up. He's forced to block. That's a good way to get some advancement. Your objective is to just start backing him up, intercepting him if he comes at you, and forcing him back until he can. He no longer has room to just force you back. Uh. Uh, go, yeah, I mean, if you want to post pictures in chat, I'm not going to stop you. You've got to just stay patient. And I I know that's super frustrating against Guile. Like, being patient against Guile is, like, the biggest hell in, like, the whole... Uh, like, the whole game, in my opinion. It is so, so, like, annoying and taxing as many characters. Like I said... I play I play Zangief when I play. Can you imagine how annoying it is to to get in against Guile as Zangief? It's it's probably one of the worst matchups in the game, and the only solution is to play as smart as possible and just take it slow. It is a very different game. You have to change your game plan. You have to play this extremely slow game. It frustrates a lot of people, and I totally get that. But you have to do it. You have to practice it. You have to get it right. That's the only way to beat a Guile who knows what he's doing. Yeah, I mean... You, you swim the tricycle, that's correct. I mean, you, you can't... You have to... Fire, most, fire, most fireballs are reeds. You can't jump over them on reaction. Because you'll at, at best, you'll get blocked. And at worst, you'll get flash kicked or otherwise intercepted. Um, you know, like, if you, once you see the fireball, it's, it's too late. You have to, 
you have to be like, oh, this guy's going to fireball. That's when I'll jump. And that's why it's a bit risky. And the, the smarter, better strategy against fireball spammers is just to walk, block, walk, block, and just march them down. Because that doesn't expose you to the risk of jumping at the wrong time and getting anti-aired in some way. So, you know, the, just, just a thing to keep in mind. Like, you... you Jumping, if you have a solid read, like they're always doing fireball at a certain time, or like their timing is obvious, absolutely do the jump. But if you're not certain, like certain, certain that they're going to fireball, especially against Guile, take the safe way and just walk at them. And don't, you know, don't risk a bunch of your health, especially against like a V-Trigger 2 Guile or a Urian who can... Make your life absolute misery if you get caught with an anti-air. Uh, to, to don't hand it to them. Play it safe. All right, so that's it for tonight. I know there's a couple. There's like one soccer video left, but I'm out of time. Uh, next week we'll be off uh, because I will be stuck in a nice town in the middle of nowhere working on a long on a long-term uh project so it'll i won't be back for this show uh but don't worry i'll be back in two weeks uh with more information and more stuff to talk about in the meantime uh you can always find me at the new challenger uh, dot com discord dot gg discord uh you can see the link from moobot up in the chat uh Feel free to ping me or any of the other coaches if you need help. And please remember to send me more replays for uh, the upcoming weeks. I accept them either at the uh, email, which is nchbeginnerbreakdowns at gmail.com, or you can send them to me on Discord. Just message me. I'm KZA on uh, the new Challenger Discord, or you can ping the coaches, and any of them will be able to point you in the right direction. If you forget that information and just want to send a replay in. All right. I appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Uh, I hope I hope everyone got some information out of this. I know I kind of want uh, some... I'm hoping to get some more replays from the new patch uh, for the next one because there's some fairly significant changes, especially to some of my favorite and least favorite characters. So I want to see how those shake out. So uh, please... Send me everything you got. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming out, and have a good evening.